I'm going to turn our attention to the question of democracy. Um, and again, that's the framework that has brought us here this evening. Um, the Graduate Center, um, as President Meiskens mentioned, is in the middle of a two-year initiative supported by the Carnegie Foundation on the question of the promise and perils uh, of democracy. And the, the, the theme for this autumn is, what are the current threats to democracy? So um, uh, this book is really, uh, I think, fits just Ex extremely well in this in this discussion. So, um, Emmanuel and Gabriel, um, throughout the book, you argue squarely uh, that inequities in the U.S. tax system represent a fundamental threat to American democracy. The tax system you describe as a system of plutocracy, uh, and you note that the um, the wealthy have an ever increasing capacity to shape policymaking and government uh, for their own benefit. So let's just take a closer look. Um, in your discussion beyond the Laffer curve, I think most of you probably. Remember from Econ 101, the Laffer curve famously drawn on a napkin is the curve that's supposed to tell us which tax rate is going to maximize revenue. Um, you argue in the book that deconcentrating inequality may justify designing a tax system that does not maximize revenue. Um, isn't that economic heresy? Uh, are you gonna lose your licenses to practice economics and have to become plumbers? Um, how, how will you defend a tax plan that is designed uh, not to maximize revenue? What's the yeah, argument in it's, terms it's, of it's, you know, we, we are going to be excommunicated, I think, from uh, the uh, uh, economist profession for that chapter and other uh, things that we do in the book, but we're doing this uh, for good reasons. And what we're trying to do in the book is to help you know, the public reconnect with the history and the tradition of tax progressivity and tax justice that's been so important in the US. You know, you have two traditions, and we start the book by telling this history. You know, there, there is a strong anti-tax, anti-government, you know, anti-democracy tradition that's largely rooted in, in slavery. And you see that when you look at the tax systems of you know, Virginia in the 19th century. And there is also a, a progressive tradition that says, look, an extreme concentration of wealth in and of itself is a bad thing, you know, is corrosive. Uh, for society, uh, for the social compact. And so one of the roles of the tax system, the main role of the tax system is to generate revenue, and for that you don't want to be on the wrong side of the Laffer curve when revenue falls, when you increase the tax rate. But another very important role of the tax system, and historically that's played a big role in US society, is to limit the concentration of wealth. You see that with the, the speech by Roosevelt that I mentioned, you know, this idea that nobody should earn more than a certain income. Why? What's the reasoning behind that? The reasoning is that for most of the population, wealth is safety, security is a good thing, but for the very, very rich, wealth is not safety, wealth is power. And so an extreme concentration of wealth means an extreme concentration of power. You know, the power to influence policy making, the power to influence markets. Um, and you want to use the tax system, you might want to use the tax system to reduce this power and to regulate uh, inequality. And we think that's an important uh, uh, rationale. 